Wednesday of the second week of Lent A proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew As Jesus was going up to Jerusalem, he took the twelve disciples aside by themselves. Then the mother of the sons of Zebedee approached him with her sons and did him homage, wishing to ask him for something. He said to her, What do you wish? She answered him, Command that these two sons of mine sit one at your right and the other at your left in your kingdom. Jesus said in reply, You do not know what you are asking. Can you drink the chalice that I am going to drink? They said to him, We can. He replied, My chalice you will indeed drink, but to sit at my right and at my left is not mine to give, but is for those for whom it has been prepared by my Father. When the ten heard this, they become indignant at the two brothers. But Jesus summoned them and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and the great ones make their authority over them felt. But it shall not be so among you. Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you shall be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you shall be your slave. Just so, the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord Whoever wishes to be great The Gospel may be described as a drama in five senses. Scene 1. Jesus tells his disciples that he is going to Jerusalem where he will suffer, die, and be raised. Scene 2. The mother of Zebedee's two sons approaches Jesus, asking for positions of honor for them. Scene 3. Jesus inquires if they know what they are asking and if they understand the price they must pay. Scene 4. The other ten disciples become in angry. They want such positions of honor for themselves. Scene 5. Jesus calls them all together and instructs them on the meaning of true discipleship. Note the earthly ambitions of the mother, the two disciples, and the ten disciples, scene 2 and 4. Observe how Jesus is trying to teach the disciples what his true greatness consists of. Senses 1, 3, and 5. Indeed, authentic discipleship demands sacrifice, suffering, service, and self-surrender, all in imitation of the example of Jesus, who comes not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. What is my vision of true greatness and authentic discipleship? How can I respond to Jesus' challenges, especially during this Lenten season? <music>